Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's Congress leader Rahul Gandhi disqualified from parliament. Activists at UN highlight Pakistan's rights violations in Sindh, Balochistan. And Afghans complain about poverty and unemployment as Ramadan begins. And now for all the details. Indian's main opposition Congress leader Rahul Gandhi was disqualified from the parliament on Friday, a day after a court sentenced him to two years in jail in a defamation case over his speech made during 2019 election campaign. In the 2019 remarks, Gandhi had referred to thieves as having the surname Modi. He, however, said he had made the comment to highlight corruption and it was not against any community. The Congress also held protests across India over the notification, one of the highest profile disqualifications of a sitting lawmaker in the country. Congress party leaders have described the judgment as politically motivated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling BJP government. Party leaders said they will fight the judgment both legally and politically. Rahul Ji ko डिस्कालीफाई करने के लिए सारे प्रयास किए हैं और सच बोलने वालों को लोकतंत्र के उसूलों के अनुसार और संविधान के तहत और उसकी रक्षा के लिए और जनता के हकों के लिए लड़ने वालों का मुंह बंद करने के लिए उनको सदन से बाहर डाला गया है। India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched various initiatives including TB Free Panchayat, the official pan-India rollout of a shorter preventive treatment and family central care model for tuberculosis. Addressing the One World TB Summit in Varanasi, Modi said that India is working on the target of ending TB completely by the year 2025, five years before the global target. He praised India's thriving pharmaceutical sector and a key asset in the global fight. बहुत बड़ा संकल्प लिया है और संकल्प लिया है देशवासियों के भरोसे. The Prime Minister later in the day launched 28 development projects worth over 1,780 crore rupees in Varanasi. The initiatives include a public ropeway project and drinking water schemes. India on Thursday slammed Pakistan at the UN Human Rights Council after Islamabad raked up the Kashmir issue. Indian diplomat PR Tulsidas said, despite Pakistan's repeated attempts to derail the process through its active and sustained support to terror groups, India's Jammu and Kashmir is marching towards peace and prosperity. He said safeguarding the rights of minorities forms an essential core of India's polity, but in Pakistan what minorities receive are blasphemy laws and systematic persecution. The diplomat asserted that Pakistan's contribution as a leading exporter of terror and violence is unparalleled as he questioned Islamabad over the presence of 150 UN-designated terrorists and terrorist entities in Pakistan. Pakistan's contribution as a leading exporter of terror and violence is unparalleled. Can Pakistan deny the fact that it is a home to as many as 150 UN designated terrorists and terrorist entities listed by the UN and that these proscribed individuals have actively campaigned and contested in elections? Can Pakistan deny the fact that impunity reigns supreme in the country as perpetrators of 2611 continue to roam, roam free? Activists drew attention to Pakistan's negligence towards flood victims in Sindh and its atrocities in Balochistan during the ongoing UNHRC session in Geneva this week. They urged the world body to take cognizance and intervene. General Secretary of the World Sindhi Congress, Laku Luhana, during his intervention at the UNHRC session in Geneva on Thursday, drew attention to the millions of Sindhi flood victims who have been abandoned by the Pakistan government and are living in precarious conditions. 
The activist said Pakistan has been using the flood victims to gain international aid, while even after six months, thousands of Thindis remain homeless and are suffering from poverty, diseases, malnutrition and death. Pakistan is trying to catch the miseries of Sindhi people to get international aid. But he believe the Pakistan, Pakistani federal and provincial governments do not want to rebuild devastated cities, towns and villages of Sindh and lives of Sindhi people. Meanwhile, Baloch activist Munir Mengal also raised concern over Pakistan's atrocities in Balochistan, especially in the wake of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project. He blamed both Islamabad and Beijing have been unfairly exploiting Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources. The Baloch people are facing mass displacements, enforced disappearances and military operations as they are being systematically neglected, suppressed and oppressed. I urge this council to call upon Pakistani government to immediately stop military operations, enforced disappearances and systematic abuse of human rights in Baluchistan. The long-awaited loan agreement between Pakistan and the International Monetary Fund IMF will be signed once a few remaining points, including a proposed fuel pricing scheme, are settled. IMF official Esther Perez Ruiz has confirmed. The latest issue is a plan announced by PM Shehbaz Sharif last week to charge affluent consumers more for fuel with the money raised to be used to subsidize prices for the poor who have been hit hard by inflation. Media reports have suggested the Petroleum Ministry has been given six weeks to work out the pricing plan. However, Ruiz said the government did not consult the global lender about the fuel pricing scheme, while the cash-strapped country awaits an IMF approval for loan of 1.1 billion US dollars. With foreign reserves to only cover about four weeks of necessary imports, the IMF funding is crucial. और आपको पता है पेट्रोल के एक दो चार रुपए बढ़ने से हर चीज बढ़ जाती है और जब पेट्रोल में पांच रुपए कम होते हैं सर तो कोई रेट का कम नहीं होता सर the markets of Afghanistan's Kabul city were packed with scores of people on Thursday, many of whom complained about the high cost of products during the holy month of Ramadan. People are calling on the Taliban government to provide them with job opportunities and reopening of schools for girls, an issue that the international community is also insisting on so they can live a normal life. Afghanistan's economic crisis has gripped most Afghans and shopkeepers say that many people cannot afford to buy food. No foreign country has officially recognized the Taliban's government. The Afghanistan head of the World Food Program has called on the international community to increase its support for humanitarian efforts to avoid a humanitarian disaster in the war-torn country. Huge crowds of Hindu devotees thronged temples across India on Friday to mark the third day of the nine-day-long festival of Chaitra Navratri, dedicated to Goddess Durga. Hindus also welcomed their new year with the beginning of the festival. Scores of Hindu devotees across India thronged temples to offer prayers on the third day of the nine-day-long fasting festival of Chaitra Navratri, dedicated to Durga, the Goddess of Power. Hindus across the country also welcomed their new year with the beginning of festival. Devotees were seen waiting patiently in queues for their chance to offer prayers at the Kalika temple in central Bhopal city. Chaitra Navratri is celebrated during the spring season. There is a goddess manifestation linked with each day of Navratri. बहुत अच्छा आज तो बहुत ही अच्छा लगता है मैं रोज आती हूँ प्रतिदिन मैं यही ड्यूटी आती हूँ इंदिरा गांधी में मेरा नाम आवत पाठी है मुझे आज तो इतना अच्छा लग रहा है इतना अच्छा लग रहा है कि इतना खुश होकर मैं नहीं जाती थी आज बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा है Similar scenes were witnessed at the famous Kamakya Temple in northeastern Assam state, which is highly revered among mystics and Tantra occult practitioners. During Navratri, many people observe fast and some restrict their diet to fruit and vegetables as they spurn meat, onions and garlic. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.